Alright, so quite a chunk of stuff. Let's practice what we've learned, just to get you accustomed to the Scala way of creating and using objects, fields, parameters, and methods. So let's do a little exercise. So I want you to implement a novel and a writer class. A novel means a book and a writer is the one writing the novels. The, the writer should have, should have, let's say, a first name, a surname, and a year of birth, and a method called a full name, which returns the concatenation of first name and surname. The, now the novel would have, let's say, a name, of course, and a year of release. And of course, an author, which is an instance of type writer. All right. Now, the methods for for novel, let's say we have an author age, which returns the age of the author at the year of release. Okay. Now, another method would be is written by an author. And a method called copy, which receives a, a new year of release. And this thing, let's say, returns a new instance of novel with a new year of release. Let's say uh, the author actually expanded or revised the edition. All right, so these are very, very basic, but I want you to do these because I want you to get accustomed to the Scala rules. Next, I want you to create a little counter class, which returns, which receives an int value. So this guy receives an int and has a method which returns a current count and the method to increment and decrement the counter by one, but these guys will return a new counter. I also want you to overload the inc and decrement methods to actually receive a parameter, which is the amount by which you uh, increment or decrement the counter and the result will be a new counter every single time. All right, so let's pause the video and actually work through these. Okay, so I hope you worked through the exercises even though they were very simple. I'm going to solve them now, although I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining every single detail of the first because it's very basic. I just wanted you to get accustomed to the Scala syntax and rules. There is a little bit of an interesting thing at the is written by method, but we're gonna get there very shortly. So let's define the class novel, class writer first because it has an, uh, a first name, just a string, a surname, which is also a string, and the year, which is an int, the year of birth. And the full name method, which is string, it will return first name plus a space, plus a space, plus its surname. All right, so this is basically it. You can also use a, an S interpolated string if you want. All right, now the class novel has a name, which is a string, the year of release, which is an int, and the, an int written properly, and the author, which is a writer. All right, so you can use these types for parameters. And the uh, author age method will be the uh, year year minus the author's year. But year is not a field, so we need to declare it a field. So the year um, 
parameter has to be made a field so that it's accessible in the novel class. Now, is written by um, some author, which is a writer, basically tests that the author that I receive as a parameter is equal to this.author. This is an interesting conversation. We're going to get to that very shortly. And the copy, which gets a new year of release, and this is going to be an int, and returns a novel. This is going to be a new novel with the same name, with a new year, and the same author. All right, so the name and author are implied to be this instance's name and author, and the new year is going to be the parameter. All right, so let's quickly test our code and create some instances. So let's say I'm going to create an author, which is a new writer. I'm going to name him Charles Dickens. And I think we need a year of birth. Oh. So we have Charles, first name, Dickens, and the year of birth, 1812, if Wikipedia is to be believed, and the novel to be a new novel by the name Great Expectations. The year of release is 1861, and the author is author. All right, so if we print uh, what author age, so novel dot author age, we're going to see the difference 1861 uh, versus 1812. It's probably 49. Yeah, of course. And most importantly, novel is written by author. And this will print true because the novel has the author as, of course, its author. So we're going to see the value true here. But notice what I'm writing. If I duplicate this, and if I say imposter, and I print line novels written by imposter, although imposter and author have the same names and the same year of birth, this guy will return false. Now, there is a question whether this is actually what we want, because if I have two instances of the same class with actually the same data, I would expect to have equality between them. So basically, author and imposter should be equal. Equality is an important problem in object-oriented languages, and we're going to talk about equality and how Scala deals with it very shortly in this section. But this, in short, is the implementation that we wanted. Notice that I didn't really specify return types for all my methods here because the compiler infers them for me. We're going to take the compiler for granted um, in this course. Now let's go to the counter class. This is more interesting. Even though it doesn't do a very interesting thing, the actual class is very interesting. Let me show you how I'm, or what I mean by that. So let's create a counter class, which receives a value as a parameter. So let's say it has an n as an initial parameter. Okay, and if I define a method called count, that will return the current count for this instance, right? So this is a method that returns the current count that is being held in this counter. Now notice that n is a parameter, not a field. In practice, the way that we reunite a field with a method that just returns that field, basically a getter, is to define a val. And call this count and be done with it, All right? So this has the same effect as defining a method that actually gets that field. Now the methods to increment and decrement are very similar, so uh, let's define the inc method, and this returns a new counter with count plus one. This is very important. The fact that we're returning a new counter rather than modifying the current count in this instance is called immutability, 
and is the same principle with declaring vowels for primitive types, but extended to objects and to classes. This is extremely important in functional programming. This basically says that instances are fixed, they cannot be modified inside. Whenever you need to modify the contents of an instance, you actually need to return a new instance. This is an incredibly important concept, and we're going to use it a lot in this course, and you're going to need it a lot in your Scala code in the future. Now, in very much the same fashion, the decrement method is a new counter with decremented count. Right? And the overloads to increment and decrement will be something like inc with a count, which is an int, and returns a new counter with um, count plus n. And of course, the decrement method equals a new counter of count minus n. Now, an interesting thing happens if you want to use this counter to actually log something whenever it's incremented or decremented. So instead of uh, increment and decrement being something with a side effect like print line incrementing, and the decrement should be print line decrementing. For example, if you want to log something, if something happens, if uh, an event occurs, then these definitions for ink and deck do not hold anymore because you're jumping off n times and you want to print incrementing and decrementing n times instead. So let's assume that ink and deck are our source of logging. So in order to not repeat ourselves, we want to actually call int and deck from the overloaded uh, counterparts. So for example, if I want to increment n times, remember, instead of looping, we want recursion. So we're going to say if n is less than or equal to zero, just to be extra safe, I'm going to return this same instance because uh, it doesn't need in any incrementing. Otherwise, I'm going to call the inc method and then recursively call this method with n minus one times. So inc, and notice that inc without any parameters actually returns the result of the method application, so the calling of this method. So this calls the inc method, and then I want to do a dot inc n minus one. But the compiler this time complains because the recursive method inc needs result type, so I'm going to use the counter type. All right, so inc dot inc n minus one. And the same thing for decrement. All right, so this guy returns a counter as well. And I'm going to say if n is less than or equal to zero, I'm going to return this. Otherwise, decrement dot decrement n minus one. All right, let's add a little method called print. And this actually returns or prints to the console. Let's just print to the console the current count. All right, let's test our code. So let me create in this uh, in the app, so on the top level of basic existence app, I'm going to create a little counter. So val counter is going to be a new counter with a value zero, which by the way, we can pass in as a default value in the counter constructor. So we can say equals zero here. And that means I don't need to supply it explicitly. All right, so this creates a new counter and the default value is implied to be zero. All right. Now, if I say counter.inc and then print, this will actually print one, and the inc method will print incrementing, which in practice might be some other kind of event, like logging something in a file or uh, triggering an event to something else. All right. So uh, let's right click and run this. And it says incrementing, which is the effect of the inc method, and then print, which is one. 
All right? We can, of course, say counter dot ink dot ink dot ink, and it increments the counter three times. And if we call the print method, we are going to see incrementing printed three times, and then the value three. And also, we can use counter dot ink with a value, say, 10, and then a print, which will print incrementing 10 times and then the value 10. So let's right click and run and test all of these. All right, so we have everything here. We have incrementing one and then three times incrementing and the value three, and then 10 times incrementing and the value 10, which leads us to the conclusion that we've implemented our little counter correctly. All right, let's quickly sum up the basics. So you've learned about classes, about how to define them and how to instantiate them with the keyword new. You've also learned about class parameters and class fields, that they are different things. And the way that you convert a parameter to field is to just use the keyword val or var. You've also learned how to uh, define methods inside the class definitions. You've also learned how to call methods, although this was probably familiar to you from other languages. Now, just as a reminder, this syntax without parentheses uh, for calling methods is allowed for methods without parameters. All right. So you've also learned about overloading methods, and you've also learned to use the keyword this, both to access the current instance uh, being operated on and to define and call other constructors. All right, people, so in 30 minutes, you've basically gone through object orientation in Scala, which is pretty damn cool. So let's go and expand what we've learned in the next videos. <laughs>